Hey guys, Ms. B. Gonzalez here, and uh, if this is your first time joining us on one of our online PD sessions that La Jolla ISD is providing for us, uh, welcome. Thank you for choosing us. Thank you for making the time. Even though we are in this remote learning time period, it doesn't mean that we are not busy. So I appreciate you taking time out of your busy schedule. Believe me, we're, we all know how difficult it is uh, teaching from home. It's not as easy as we thought, right? But nonetheless, I do want to uh, welcome you to our online PD sessions. If you are a returning uh, participant, uh, that means you liked it. And I'm so happy that you decided to click on today's lesson, guys. Um, because today it's all about digitizing your hands-on lessons, okay? So you might have an activity that you love doing at, in, in your classroom, but you don't know how to go about continuing to do that, how to transfer it, transform it to become a digital lesson. So today we're actually going to get into just some ideas that might spark your creativity to continue uh, your lessons that you already had and just kind of transform them and enhance them with our new ed tech learning. All right. So uh, I do want to start off by introducing myself. My name is Beatriz Gonzalez and I am currently a teacher at JD Salinas Middle School. I've been there since 2009. I actually started teaching in 2007 and I am a proud alumni of La Jolla High School. Uh, I do have a bachelor's in history as well my, as my master's in administration. Aside from that, um, my greatest accomplishments and my biggest pride and joys, as you see here, are my boys. Uh, over here in the cap and gowns, you see myself, but I was so proud that day because my triplets uh, graduated from first grade. Uh, so a, a really proud moment for me. And on this side over here, I have... Uh, all four of my boys, including the little one. And uh, I just love this picture because it looks normal. <laughs> With four boys, you can only imagine uh, normal is not in our vocabulary. <laughs> but anyways, uh, that's just a little bit about myself, guys. Uh, I hope that you enjoy the training. Uh, let's get started with what are our goals and objectives uh, for today's training. So some of our objectives uh, is to digitize our hands-on lessons. Just because we're doing remote learning doesn't mean that one, our, our uh, teaching styles go out the window. No, they don't. If we're used to doing hands-on activities, we can still continue to do that. The purpose is to facilitate with this remote learning to show you, hey, it might be a little difficult at first, it might be a learning curve, but th there's one thing I always say, and you'll see it throughout all my presentations, is that without any struggle, there's no progress. If we don't, if we don't find ourselves a little frustrated, a little flustered, then we might not be pushing ourselves and challenging ourselves to be better and to do more. So always keep that in mind, guys. So our goals for today, we actually have quite a few, and um, I don't want you guys to ever feel um, like it's too much, because the beauty about these online PD sessions versus live, you might assume that, hey, if I go in live, at least I get to ask questions um, right then and there and things like that. Well, the beauty about our online PD sessions is that you can always pause, replay, and, and, and try it yourself, uh, as well as you have our contact information, so you can always contact us if you have any questions. So uh, th that's what I love about it, because most of the time we're stuck doing one thing, but the, the presenter has moved on, and you still haven't gotten this one thing. That's the thing about today, guys. Whenever you feel like, okay, wait a minute, I'm not ready yet, you can just pause the presentation, do what the task is, uh, accomplish it and then we move on so if you have to do that even better guys because we know that we're being intentional with our learning so we are going to learn and practice how to add uh, a slides templates to your drive so if you notice this really cute slides template that I have here we I got it from a specific uh, online web tool that's free and I'm gonna be showing you three different web tools that give us this really neat cute templates 
I keep seeing cute, but guys, I guess, uh, really cool looking uh, templates. Um, we're going to learn how to insert a YouTube video within our presentation. Uh, and also, we're going to learn how to make it start at a certain point and stop at a certain point. So we're going to mess with those, uh, those formatting tools. In addition, how to create uh, digital graphic organizers within our presentation. So we're going to do something simple, but it's just to spark your, your, your creativity so that you can be inspired to do more. We're going to do a, a frayer model activity. Uh, and then we're going to create a hands-on drag and drop activity similar to what uh, you would do in the classroom with a paper and pencil and crayons type of thing. Uh, and then we're going to wrap it up uh, by uploading our presentation, our hands-on presentation we're working on today to your Google Classroom, guys, so that you can see how easy it is for kids to still work on activities that are actually hands-on activities. And of course, we're going to uh, really focus on those sharing settings because a lot of the times we get a little bit confused on how, uh, how to share it out. Uh, that information, these uh, documents, these slides, presentations. All right, so now that we've got our objective, our purpose, our goals, now let's get to what some requirements are for, for, for today's uh, online PD session. Some required equipment, guys, and it's only, I'm saying required because I think it will really set up uh, the, the best uh, scenario for making a really good online PD session is for you to be able to, one, have a, a secondary screen, so your, I, your phone, your uh, iPad, right? Have a secondary screen going where you're actually playing this video. And then you need to use your laptop or your Chromebook or a desktop. It is best when creating uh, that we work off of our laptop, our Chromebook, or our desktops. It's, it, it won't work if we're using our iPads or any type of tablet of the sort. But I do recommend, again, for you guys to have that secondary uh, screen so that you can be playing and then pause, work on it, play again. It's, it's awesome, guys. I guarantee you it's really going to be beneficial. So if you don't have that yet, uh, pause the video and I'll give you some time to set it up and then we'll come back. I want you guys to be able to literally be actively participating in today's uh, session. So if you look at the description below on my YouTube tutorial, if you look below under in the description section, there is a link. Okay, I want you guys to click on that link. And that link is going to direct you to a, it looks like a white screen, and then it's going to say, make a copy. And it's this exact presentation that's going to be copied into your Google Drive. So we want to make sure that we're in our drive of La Jolla ISD, so our ljisd.com account, okay, our Google account, so that it'll make a copy and you'll be able to open it up. So that's what I'm asking of you right now to do. That is your first task. Click on it. Open it up, and you should be right here. All right, guys? So go ahead and press pause so we can all be right here. You can get it going. You might be wondering where I got this amazing presentation that you just copied to your drive. Well, this one was acquired from Slides Mania, the one you have right here in the middle. And she does some amazing, amazing work. And the beauty about it is it's all free. And I'm going to show you how easy it is to go and download and add these templates to your drive. Another two resources that are my go-to resources are Slides Go and Slides Carnival. So what I'm going to do right now, and these are linked so they can, as soon as we click on them, they're going to take you to that site. So I'm going to go ahead and take you to Slides Go right now. So this is Slides Go, and all these presentations that you have here are free for you to use. You can also search through all the free templates that they have, and there's a menu bar here that you can also browse through. So if you want popular or education, business, marketing, medical, 
it, it's up to you. But aren't these presentations so visually appealing? And the best thing about it is the work is done. You don't want to have to start from scratch, guys. You don't want to have to uh, start from a white presentation and then have to add all these visuals. That's super time consuming. We need to work smarter, not harder. And the work is done for us here. So all of these are really neat. The hardest part, guys, is going to be deciding which one you want. Okay, because that's what takes me the longest to decide which one I'm going to use. So uh, another thing about Slides Go that I absolutely love is that you can actually um, preview them through, the, through this mode. So they have little arrows here that you can go through them and it'll show you uh, how the slides would look and how you just have to go in there and input some information. So here's another one, Green School. And so you're able to go through it. And that's the presentation and you can edit everything from the color to the the font and of course the images that are there those are just stock images but if you like them you can keep them there they're free to use uh, so that's just one way now I want to show you how you download these or add them to your Google Drive I'm gonna click on this one once you've chosen the presentation that you're gonna be using the template that you liked your next step is to uh, either add it to your drive if you're going to be using Google Slides or downloading a PowerPoint template. So uh, adding it to your drive is the easiest and most seamless thing you can do, especially because you're already signed up. If you're using that Chrome browser, you're signed into your Google account, your drive account as well. Uh, so. Um, the best bet is always going that route, guys, because it makes it, like I said, so seamless. And that's the best part about Google is that it just facilitates your productivity. The other thing is uh, downloading it in PowerPoint as a PowerPoint template. That's fine. You can do that. You can work that PowerPoint off your desktop. Once you upload it to your drive, you can open it under Slides. Some stuff might not jive, but it won't be that big of, a, of, a, of an issue. If you're a Mac user uh, and you use Keynote, check out, I have a YouTube tutorial on how to open up a PowerPoint presentation uh, into a Keynote. So you would download it at a PowerPoint and open it up under Keynote. Check out that tutorial. It's actually really, really short and, uh, and fast, guys. So check it out if you're interested and if you're a Keynote user. Now let's move on to another one. So this is Slides Mania, and it also provides free template themes for both Google Slides and PowerPoint. And it is amazing. Her work is absolutely amazing. Like I said, the biggest struggle is gonna be actually choosing a presentation. She has business, education, formal, fun, simple. You can see them all, browse through them. You can say, you know what, you're, you're looking for a specific theme color. You can go through there. It, it really, she has so much to choose from. One of our very own tech trainers, Ms. Ana Maria Perez, uh, she had one named after her. She, she, uh, it's called the Perez template. It's like a comic book type of template. And um, she reaches out to you on Twitter and vice versa. Mr. Omar Lopez has done some doodle work for some of her templates. So she's just amazing, and, and the thing is, all of it is free, so take advantage of it, guys, and give her a shout-out from La Jolla ISD, uh, and show your appreciation, because she is amazing at what she does, and I do want to show you one that some people are raving about, and it's the Harry Potter template. Now, I'm not a huge Harry Potter fan. Please don't kill me. Um, my best friend is, um, but... Um, but it's cute and I love it. And um, a lot of people really, really liked it. And it's super cute. I like it. I mean, it's super cool, guys. Uh, but anyways, you can, again, so just showing you the process of how you would download a presentation here, a template, you'd either just click on download PowerPoint template or get Google Slides theme. So I'm going to show you how it works for her. Very similar, all three of them because I didn't show you in the other one. It's the same thing, guys. You, She's gonna give you this. You're just gonna click on Use Template, and depending on what you're signed in at, under, that's where it's gonna get sent to your drive. 
So I clicked on use template and see how it's magically doing all this. And so it's now added to my drive. If I don't, if you don't know where, what drive, which account, you're gonna go over here to the right and you can just click on it and it'll tell you which account you're on, okay? And so over here, you'll just change the name so that you can always search for it in your drive. If you're under the wrong drive and you don't wanna go through logging in and logging out and doing all that, this is what I, I always do. I always share it. And let's say I'm in the, I was on the wrong drive. I'm just going to go ahead and share it to my LJISD account. And I'm sending it over. And now I can work on it when I log into that account. So see how easy and simple it is, guys. And you can edit the font. You can edit some of the colors. But how amazing is this? Isn't this so cute, right? So I know I keep saying cute, I need to stop. You wouldn't think I have four boys, right? We're gonna move on now to our last one, which is Slides Carnival. And again, Slides Carnival, very similar the process to downloading them as PowerPoints or adding them to your drive as a Google Slides presentation. Here they are, some of them. You have your menu bar as well up here, and you can just scroll through them, really nice ones. Uh, really visually appealing. It's just up to you what you're looking for, right? What What is the theme that you're going for? So if I like this one, I can click on it. Uh, and in order to see the different uh, slides, uh, I have to click on it and then I'm gonna keep scrolling and it gives you a little bit of how it works and all that stuff. And then I can click through it and see how the slides are going to look. And notice, very similar, either download as a PowerPoint template or use as a Google Slides theme. And you know what, guys? I know I had said I was go ahead and look at my YouTube tutorial on how to open it on a Keynote. Let me show you right now, okay? I'm gonna go ahead and click on download as PowerPoint template. So now that it's downloaded, you can see it on, my, on the bottom bar right here. I'm gonna right click it and I'm gonna show in Finder because I don't wanna open it up just yet okay I'm going to show it in my finder and here I will right click the presentation open with keynote and you're gonna see how now it's gonna go open under my keynote app so see how simple and easy it is guys it's so easy and uh, there it is so super cool. It's going to say it's missing some fonts because I don't have those fonts added to my, my library of fonts. So I can easily just show. And then here, all the ones that are this font, I can replace with a different font, right? And I just click on the one I want. And all the ones that are this font, I'll replace with these. I'm just clicking whatever, guys. All the ones that are this font, I'll replace with China Cat. So replace fonts. And they're there. Right? So I hope you guys like that little tip and trick. Let's move on. Let's go back to our presentation. So now that we're back, I'm going to give you a task, guys. And I want you guys to go open up another tab. <clears throat> so now that we're back, I want to challenge you guys. Here's a task for you. I want you to open up a tab and go to one of these sites. And I want you to add a template to your drive. Okay? Now check it out, see if it's added to your LJISD.com account. Now if it's not, remember, you can easily pause this video, rewind it, and see what I did to share it to my LJISD account. So go ahead and do that, guys. Alrighty, guys, how did you do? Were you successful? Were you able to add it to your drive? Um, did you just do one, or were you like me the first time? I just started downloading and downloading a bunch. Uh, thinking they're gonna be gone. I need to get them all. Uh, they'll be there guys. They'll be there. Believe me I kind of felt like Smeagol and my precious. Do you guys know what I'm talking about? Anybody? <laughs> Anyways, moving on. We're gonna be working off the the copy that I asked that that you got for me guys the Google Slides uh, Presentation we're gonna be working off of that one. Okay, so our first slide we're gonna move on to is we're setting this up We're setting this presentation up as if we were to present it to our students one in class and in this case in our Google Classroom. 
So uh, we're going to start with our title slide. This is where we would actually set up our title slide, right? So very simple. Now, here, what we're going to do next is we're going to work on splitting a YouTube video. So because this is remote learning, we don't have, we cannot physically be there. Uh, we can record ourselves like I'm doing right now and upload that to YouTube. If that's something that you're interested in, guys, browse through our LJISD online PD uh, resources and you'll find some there. Definitely. There's Screencastify. There's uh, iPad screen recording. So a lot of simple things that you can use if that's what you're interested in. If not, you can easily go to YouTube and find some videos that you want to use and you want your kids to watch. But a lot of the times when you're going through those videos, you're going to notice that they're like, you know, 15, 20, 30 minutes long, and that's just too long. So we are going to find the video that we want, and we're, all, we're going to basically condense it to where we want the kids to start watching and where we want them to end watching it without them having to do anything, right? So that's what we're going to work on. So I'm going to show you how to add a YouTube video to your Google slide, okay? The first thing you want to do is you want to find that YouTube video that you want to add to your Google Slides presentation. So I found this one, and I don't know what is wrong with this teacher uh, thinking that someone's going to watch a 24-minute long uh, video on sectionalism. But the cool thing is her video is divided into three sections, so that's perfect for me to divide her the, the slides presentation into three sections. And I'm going to have the kids watch a section at a time and complete assignments. And I could even do like a section for Monday and another one for Tuesday using all the same videos. So that's the way I'm going to go about using this video. And uh, you see that? That was the best still shot I could find. All of them were ridiculously funny, if you notice. <laughs> Every time I tried, it took me forever. Oh my God, I look, yeah, no. And there I'm like trying to see. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry. There's, I mean, you gotta laugh at yourself. But anyway, <laughs> anyways, this is the one I wanna use. Once you find, I gotta switch that. That's a little better. Once you find the YouTube video you want to use and add to your presentation, it's very simple. You can do uh, one of two things. You can copy the URL up uh, here in the address bar, or you can click on the share button and you can click on copy. Okay, guys? And once you click on copy, you're going to go back to your presentation. You're going to go to insert and you're going to search for video right here. And you have here by your URL, paste YouTube URL here. So I'm going to paste it there. And um, control V, paste it for you. So you copied it. It stays copied on your clipboard. All you have to do now is go ahead and click on control V. So I'm going to select it and it's going to populate it here for me in a bit. And notice what it does on this, on this side of your screen. It ends up giving you where do you want it to start and where do you want this this specific video in this slide, what do you, what do you want the, the time frames to be? Okay, so my OCD is getting to me a little bit, so I'm going to put this in the middle right here, and I'm going to delete this. <laughs> um, but notice that it went away, so I'm going to click on it again, and then you want to scroll through it, and you want to know where exactly you want to play start and end the video. So let's say I want it to start right here at six minutes. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on, I, you can click on use current time. So if you scroll through it and you're like, oh, perfect, use current time, or you can actually uh, go ahead and type in the time you want it to end. So I want from six minutes to 12, 24, 22, I'm sorry, to current, use current, 1247. So about another six minutes. I think that's enough and it covers everything having to do with the South, right? So that is how you do it, guys. In addition, uh, because the kids are going to be using this as a working copy uh, in Google Classroom, 
uh, you're not going to put autoplay when presenting because they're not going to be on the presentation mode. They themselves are going to have to play it here. So you might want to have to, you might want to put a little note that says, you might want to put a little note that says, click on the YouTube video to watch it. Okay. So that they know what to do. Uh, so anyways, that is how you add and you insert this uh, presentation, guys, this YouTube to YouTube video. All right. So was that easy? Yes. I want you guys, your task, okay, is to go to YouTube, find a video, right? Something that you're interested in, something that, and by interested, I don't mean like go look for a motorcycle video, uh, something that applies to your content area. And I want you guys to clip it and put it in here and don't forget to add those little instructions for your kiddos okay guys now if you don't use Google classroom okay this is still good practice when you go back into the classroom it's good practice to have so that when you want to show a specific part to it you're not scrolling there uh, and looking for it it's gonna be automatically there you've already made those adjustments okay guys so go ahead and press pause on this video and I want to see a YouTube video on there and go ahead and mess with the start and end times. The next thing is digitizing actual paper handouts, right? Hard copy handouts, graphic organizers. We're going to make those from scratch. And then we're also going to learn how to digitize those that are already available for us, especially when we Google, right? And they're there, hard copies on uh, the search engine. But the first one, like I said, is we're going to uh, digitize them from scratch. So we're gonna learn how to make graphic organizers from scratch on our Google Slides uh, template. And then, so that our kids can go in and fill it out. So make it interactive. Are we ready? Make sure that we do follow along, guys, and everything I do, you do in these next steps. What we're gonna be digitizing today is a real simple graphic organizer. And I wanted to keep it simple because once you learn how easy it is to recreate these, you're gonna realize that you can start making different types of graphic organizers. In this case, we have a Freyer model and it's a vocabulary practice uh, graphic organizer where in the middle you put the word and then you do different parts of, of that word. So the definition, examples, non-examples, illustrations, you can even use like uh, synonyms and antim antonyms, depending on what the word is or, or what your lesson is for that day. So we're gonna work on recreating this in our Google Slides. So we're gonna learn all those little tools that have to do with creating on Google Slides. One of the issues that teachers when using Google Slides in Google Classroom have come across is uh, when they want the kids to accomplish a task in completing a graphic organizer that they created from scratch is that uh, kids accidentally start messing with the actual graphic organizer like the table that you just created. Uh, and it can get a little bit uh, tedious and uh, frustrating for the kids. So teachers have found workarounds, right? so that the, the graphic organizer that they create, it gets locked in place and they don't mess with it and they just go in and start typing and filling it out. So we're gonna learn how to do that, guys. What you have here uh, normally is a, is a master slide. That means even if I try as much as I want to, I'm double clicking on this yellow little post-it, I can't move that. I can't move this white one. I can move this one because I can edit that. It's part of the template. However, I can't move around all these because they're part of what you call the master slide, the master template. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna create our own master slide so that the kids can't mess with it, okay? And once you create that master slide, you can start compiling them and you can like copy it and you can go paste it onto another slideshow presentation and you can name those graphic organizers. Like that you only do it once and you have all this collection, this little library of graphic organizers that you've collected and that you've created most importantly. So let's go to that master slide uh, template to start to edit and create a graphic organizer within it. So we're gonna go to view master 
and notice it's gonna turn black here, but I do have my original one off to the side. Um, yours might be actually on this side. Um, but anyways, what we're gonna do is we don't want to edit any of these if we've already worked on our original uh, slides presentation, if we have work. Because if you start editing any of these uh, templates from the master slide, they're going to change up your, your work that you've already done. So always keep that in mind. Um, if you wanna make changes, you wanna make changes uh, beforehand, okay? Or on slides that you haven't yet used. So with that said, I'm gonna go down here to the last one, and all I'm gonna do is uh, press return or enter to add a new one. And here, I'm going to right click, and I'm gonna change the background, and I'm gonna choose white. I'm sorry, white, that's not white, white. And I'm gonna click done, and now I have this white background. I'm gonna change this up, and I'm going to move it up. I'm gonna go to align, because I want the text in the middle. And now, every time that's, this slide comes out, you're gonna be able to add text up here. Now we're gonna get started in creating our actual graphic organizer. And in order to do that, we're gonna be adding a table, okay? So I want you guys to make sure that you're following along with me. Pause and play whenever you need to, guys, okay? So we're gonna go to Insert, Table, and we're gonna make a two by two table. On this two by two table, there are certain things that I want you guys to take a look at. When I hover over it here, you'll see that the cursor is to start typing. So that lets me know I can type in those cells. If I move it over towards the middle here and I've got two, hour, uh, two arrows, that means I can move these cells right or left. Up here, up here, this allows me to uh, adjust the size, the height of my cells and of my uh, table. In addition, if I pull the corners, I'm able to make the, the table larger or smaller and resize as well. If I get the towards the middle and you notice I get these crosshairs, that's me being able to move the entire cell, uh, the entire table, <coughs> excuse me. So whenever you wanna move the entire object, you wanna make sure that you get those crosshairs that look like that, okay? So now I'm going to pull this table from the bottom just to make it proportional here. And uh, I like the size of that, but you know, in thinking when I'm gonna have the kids uh, complete this, I wanna leave some space uh, to leave instructions, for me to give them instructions, so I'm gonna work on getting the crosshairs and I'm actually gonna move the table to the far right. That's too much. And then I'm gonna recenter this for the table purpose right here. Let's see. And there we go. Actually, it hasn't recentered. So I'm gonna make it smaller and then I'm gonna adjust it. All right, here we go. That is good enough. So I want to uh, be able to always type in my instructions over here on the side of the graphic organizer. So I'm going to insert a, a text placeholder. Just like this, this is a text placeholder. I'm going to go to insert placeholder and I'm going to go ahead and put a uh, body text placeholder. And I'm going to do this right here. And there you have it. And so every time you start typing there, that's how it will it will look, okay? I mean, it'll look better, right? You can always adjust the, the fonts and things like that, uh, but it's just so that it knows that this is gonna be a text that's gonna be going there. So now, the next thing is, now let's beautify this uh, graphic organizer that we have here. Because right now it looks really simple and uh, I want to make the outlines a little better and I still need that text box in the middle. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on all of it. So I use the crosshairs to select it all. So I clicked on it. And then I want to make the borders, the lines black instead of gray, because they were gray. I wanna thicken them. This is where you, you thicken the, the, the weight of the lines. And then I want to insert a shape. So I'm going to shapes and you can put whatever shape you'd like. Uh, you can put 
a, a rectangle, you can put a, a little word cloud, it, it's up to you. For example, I can do this instead. So I can put that and then I'm going to edit it so that it's white. So I go to the little fill bucket and I want it white and I want the lines there and I want it three, there you go. So that's looking a lot cuter. <laughs> I like to use the word cute. Uh, and in addition, I want to have some, some words that are pre-filled in here, guys, okay? So in order to do that, I'm going to go to insert and I'm going to insert text because that text will always be there. They're not going to be able to re uh, to change the text here. It's always going to be there. So it's going to here. It's going to say definition, and I want it uh, bold and underlined. So Control B, Control U, and a little bit bigger than that. Let's see if 24 is too big. No, that's perfect. So I want that there. I'm going to copy that and control C and control V, paste it. And remember, if I'm going too fast, pause and go back. But what I'm doing here is I'm inserting text. And when you insert text to the master slide, it cannot be changed versus inserting a text placeholder. It's just letting you know that when you're working on it, editing it uh, on your regular slides, uh, slideshow, you can add text there. This will not change. So once you make that to the slideshow presentation, to the master slide, that's how it's gonna look. So here I'm gonna put non, uh, I'm gonna put illustration, and this is where I'm gonna want the kiddos to get a, an image from online and put it in there. But I want it to be on aligned to this right hand side. So I'm gonna go here, align to the right. There we go. And instead of having to reformat the font, I just grab this, guys. I do the crosshairs, control C, control V. I grab the I wait for the crosshairs to show up. And now I reposition it. And here I'm gonna type in um, example. And then I'm gonna grab this one copy and paste it, put it right here. And this one is going to say um, non-example. So maybe I guess an antonym. In here, I'm going to put a little text box inside this word cloud uh, that says word. So I'm going to just use the same text. I'll just make it smaller and it'll say word there we go and uh, I'm going to center it and you know what I liked it better in caps word and I'm gonna make it smaller and not so bold because I want the kids here to put in their text okay so what's next? What else are we going to be, what else can we do here? There's other things that you can do to facilitate it for the kids. You can, just like I added this text uh, placeholder here, I can do the same here, but the kids can easily insert text and start typing as well. So it's up to you how uh, detailed you want to get. But let me just show you an example of what I mean. I can here, I'm going to go insert placeholder, body text placeholder, and I'm going to put it right here. So now every time the kids are going to type, they just have to click there and it'll start typing for them. Does that make sense? But I'm going to go ahead and delete that and I'm going to leave it like that. And the kids are going to know this is where I add text and I start typing my information. Now my master slide is done already. Okay. So I want to rename this slide so that I always know that this is my Freyer model. And you might have different types of Freyer models. So maybe this is Freyer model one or something like that. So, okay. And now I'm done. All I have to do is click on this X. And here guys, I'm going to press enter to get a new slide, but I'm going to right click that one and I'm going to apply a different layout. 
And here, oops, here is my Frere model one. I'm gonna click on that one. And there you go. There's the one we worked on. And notice the kids can't do anything to this background to my Frayer model. They won't be, the only thing that they can do is this right here. Now the teacher will be able to also mess with this and the students as well. But that's just something a little extra because if not, we'd be having to go to the master slide and put in the instructions or the directions every time. Okay guys, so now let's actually create the assignment just so that you get an idea of how I would go about doing this. We always start with the end in mind. So good uh, uh, pedagogy would tell us, you know, let's look at our data. And so I'm gonna go to our lead forward and I'm not an ELA teacher, but I use lead forward and I use the release test and I found this one term having to do with vocabulary and it's the word capture, sixth grade ELA, 2019 test. Which definition most closely matched the way the word capture is used in paragraph two? And so capture has different definitions and the kids need to uh, identify uh, and use it in the correct context. So here is paragraph two. So what I'm gonna do here and what you can do is you can take a screenshot or use the snippet tool to actually capture, you see what I did there? <laughs> Anyways, uh, to actually take a screenshot and capture this uh, paragraph. So I'm gonna, Mac users, command shift four. If not, uh, Windows, you, you're able to use the snipping tool uh, to capture those uh, screenshots. Mine go directly to my desktop. So I'm gonna go back. And now here, instead of actually putting a title, I'm gonna delete this text box, it's highlighted. And I'm going to insert an image. And what I'm gonna insert is that screenshot right there. So open. And now I'm just going to uh, format it so that it fits and it looks good right here. And then we use the right directions and instructions for the kiddos. Here you can put, read the above paragraph and create a frayer and complete the Freyer model using the word capture comma in, in the right context. And so then we just kind of fix it to make it look good and there we go. And so now I'm actually using, it's, it's data driven and the kids are gonna go in here and once it gets assigned to the kids, the kids will grab a text box, draw it out, and then they'd write the correct definition here and complete everything and write the word right here. And you can tell them, you get extra points for creativity, make it look pretty, add some colors and stuff like that. So they can add color to the text and, and add fonts uh, and things like that. So. That is one way of creating your own graphic organizers from scratch, okay? Completely from scratch. Now, I'm gonna show you the easier way, <laughs> but um, it's important to learn it uh, the hard way, right? Because then uh, we, we've learned so many other extra skills that come along with it, but there is a, a couple of easier ways and we're gonna show you that next, all right? All right, so now let's talk about how easy it is to find a graphic organizer online and make it editable. And the reason why I say editable is because we're not really gonna edit it, but we're gonna allow our kids to be able to uh, uh, type over it by adding text boxes in uh, onto it. So it's kind of editable. So let's see how we're going to do this. Okay, guys, I'm going to head over to my Google search engine and I want you guys to do the same. And we're going to search for sequencing graphic organizers. So when I search for sequencing graphic organizers, I got a ton of them. And there's always so many to choose from. And so now we can actually use them and be able to assign them through our Google Slides presentation and for them to be interactive. So this is what we're gonna do. I'm just gonna show you really quick how to go about doing this. 
Uh, once you find the graphic organizer that meets the needs of your instruction, uh, you go and I like to just kind of, you see if you click on it, it shows you a preview. That's all you really need. I'm going to, you can do one of two things. You can download it to your computer or you can add it just through the URL. So that's what I'm gonna show you how to do, okay guys? The URL, because we know how to download it. If you were to download it, you'd click Save Image As, and then it asks you to title it, slide, slide two, save, right? Or let me show you the second way. So it we, we don't have, we avoid the whole saving image and putting it on your desktop. I want you guys to scroll down after you right click it, and I want you to copy the image address. So I'm gonna copy that image address, and then I'm gonna go back here. Now, what I'm gonna do next is I'm going to go ahead and open a new slide, but I'm gonna change the layout of the slide. So right click that slide, and remember if I'm going too fast, pause, rewind, and go back. And I'm gonna I'm gonna apply this black blank, I'm sorry, one. Okay? Because what I want to do after this is right click on the actual slide and I'm going to uh, change the background. So if you scroll down on this menu here, change background. <coughs> and so after that, I'm going to choose an image uh, and I can upload that image by bringing it up from my desktop. See how it is right there? Or by your URL. So I'm going to paste that URL and I'm going to insert the image. And then click done. And guess what? It's done, guys. You see how easy that was? And the cool thing about that is because it's the background, the kids, they won't be moving, it won't be frustrating to them, it won't be moving around as they're trying to complete it. So what are the kids gonna do next? Click on text, type it out, and then they can start typing away, right? Or if you want them to put images here instead. Now, you might be asking, well, there's no instructions there. Not a problem. The kids are gonna be working and completing this slide's presentation under the edit uh, mode, right? They can't be working on it under present. So under the edit mode, you have speaker notes here and you can put your instructions here. You can type in here instructions, students, uh, complete the graphic. And so whatever, you keep writing all your instructions there. You might even tell them, uh, remember your strategy. This is your strategy. What you can also do, and a lot of people don't realize this, is you can use all this dead space here. I can put a text box here, and I can make it, um, I can make it with a red background so that it stands out. And I can tell the kids right here, look at your speaker notes for instructions. And then I can even add an arrow uh, for them to, to, uh, to kind of get the idea of where those speaker notes are at. And so there we go. And you kind of get the idea, right? So anyways, look how easy that was, guys. Wasn't that amazing? Now I'm going to challenge you. Here's your task. I want you guys to create two graphic organizers just like this, okay? And I want you to include instructions and everything so that it's ready to go, okay? Because the beauty about this, guys, is that I can always just grab this this one right here. I can copy that slide. And if I choose to, to uh, paste it over here, another one, it even has my instructions just there as well. So you can start making them very general uh, so that all you do is tell them, hey, your, your story is this story, especially if you have the stories from a, on a PDF presentation, all right? So see how easy that is, guys? That's super easy. Uh, I want you guys to take pause, press pause, and I want you to do it right now, all right? Two of them. So the next thing is, and the final thing to do here, um, 
the, the last activity I'm going to teach you is how to take an actual hands-on activity, something that kids are cutting, pasting, uh, coloring. How do you take that and turn it into an interactive activity on Google Slides in which the, we can in turn uh, submit it to Google Classroom for our kiddos? Now, keep in mind, this is not just for remote learning. When we get back into the classroom, these are things that can be assigned through, throughout the week. They can be assigned for homework. They can be done during class as well. So I just want you guys to keep all that in mind. It doesn't mean we stop remote learning and all this goes out the window. We are actually compiling our, our uh, tech library of resources as we're growing here professionally. So let me show you the activity. This is an activity that I had just created with the kids and we didn't get to do with our eighth grade social studies kids. So this is the activity. And the idea is it has to do with sectionalism. We divide the United States into three sections. And then these little uh, pull apart uh, terms, the kids would cut through them, right? And then they paste them where they belong, where they feel they belong based on learning the, the information. So here's the final product of what they were supposed to get done, right? So uh, this was the idea. And I was actually pretty bummed that we didn't get to do it in the classroom, that my teachers didn't get to do it in the classroom. So I said, you know what? It doesn't mean just because we're going to remote learning uh, that we throw these uh, activities out the window. They can still get done. So I'm gonna show you right now how to replicate that activity into a actual Google Slides activity, guys. And as you're doing it, because we are following along and completing this uh, together, as you're doing it, think about how this can apply to your instruction, to your uh, content. How can you uh, manipulate this type of activity to fit your needs for um, your kids' uh, learning, right, and your teaching? All right, guys, so let's get started. The first thing we're gonna do, because I do want us to go exactly like, uh, like they'd say verbatim, I want you guys to copy exactly what I'm doing. I want you guys to use the same exact graphic organizer that uh, I created for you. So in order for you guys to acquire that graphic organizer, I have a link and you can find the link right here, guys. It's that blue one that says sectionalism background link. So if you click on that one and you open up the link, it'll take you to my drive and you'll be able to uh, download that image. Now, if you can't get that open, check on the, on the speaker notes and I have the link there as well. So I'm gonna give you some time. I want you guys to download that image and have it saved either on your desktop or under your downloads because we're gonna make that into our background image of the following slide, all right? Okay, so click pause and let's get to it. So now that we did that, guys, our next step is to add a, and I'm gonna give you the verbal instructions first because I wanna challenge you to see if you can do it on your own, okay guys? I want you guys to add a slide, apply a layout to that slide, so make it a blank slide, and then I want you to change the background to that slide and upload the image of the map that I just gave you as a background, all right? So go ahead, try it out guys. Press pause, mess with it. This is how we learn, this is how we grow, and if there's no struggle, there's no progress, guys. All right, so go ahead and press pause. Were you guys able to do it? If not, let's see how we did. Maybe we can identify that little misstep. A lot of the times it's just something small that uh, got us tripped up uh, somewhere along the lines. So I'm going to click on this slide and I'm going to just click on Enter over here on the navigation, right? And I'm going to right click that new slide, apply layout, and I'm gonna to go to blank. Now on this blank one, I'm going to right click and I'm gonna change the background. I'm gonna choose the image that I've already downloaded. I'm gonna choose the image that I've downloaded from, my, from the link that I gave you and I have it saved on my downloads. So here on my downloads, I'm gonna open it up and it's gonna stretch it out a bit, but it'll make it fit across my entire slide. And I'm gonna click on done. 
So were you guys able to do it? Yes. Did you find, if you did struggle, did you see, was there a little misstep that you were making? Okay, so I hope we were able to do it, guys. And now my background doesn't move at all. And so the kids won't be struggling to do the assignment when it comes to completing it. Uh, the next thing is we're gonna add a, a simple title to this and I'm gonna title it sectionalism, okay? So I'm gonna go here to my uh, toolbar and I'm gonna click on text box and I'm gonna uh, make a text box here. I'm gonna align it to the center and I'm going to type in sectionalism. Now, the other thing is I want to show you a little quick uh, tip and trick. Uh, the cool thing about Google Slides is that you can add a lot of fonts straight from Google Slides uh, right then and there. Unlike other ones, you have to like download them and add them to your computer, and then you can start using them in different uh, applications that you might have. Here, I'm going to go to my font right here and notice this right here. It says more fonts. If I click on this one, they have so many fonts here. All I have to do is browse through here or start to sort, right? Sort through them. So right now it's sorted through popularity. Uh, I can do, uh, do I want it like handwriting type? Um, what kind of script do I want it to be? I don't know what those are, but uh, anyways, let's just all scripts and then you can go and it'll show you which ones you've already added to your font library, your library of fonts. So here are the different fonts available that I can directly use onto here. And um, even if the kids don't have that font, it, it, it doesn't matter, it'll come out for them, okay, so it won't be distorted. That's the beauty about Google Slides. So uh, I can be here forever, so I'm just gonna click Sriracha, yes. And now it's changing it to Sriracha, and I'm gonna change it to 36, and perfect. So there's my title. Of course, I could have made it a little prettier, but for the sake of time, let's move on. The next thing is, I was thinking about how can I make it so that these are somewhere there. And remember I mentioned that all this on the side is, is not just dead space. We can actually use it, right? We can actually be using it for our, for our activities. So I'm going to show you how you can use these sides all around the slide so that the kids can actually, uh, you can create little text boxes and then have them slide it over to where they feel that it belongs, okay? Before we actually start, I want you guys to take a look at this map. It was created on an app on my iPad called Paper 53. So and most of the time it's so difficult to find um, graphic organizers or maps or anchor charts that are directly correlated with what we want to teach and how we want to teach that information. So. If you're interested in, uh, in uh, creating your own anchor charts, your own graphic organizers, or even your own uh, graphics like maps or charts or things like that, uh, browse through our La Jolla ISD website. There will be soon a, a tutorial that I'm gonna make on Paper 53, okay? If not, you can also find it under my YouTube channel, uh, Mrs. Talk Techie, guys. But take a look at the resources that we have to offer for La Jolla ISD. Uh, in addition, if you're interested in screencasting, there's going to be uh, a couple of things done under that. I know Miss Ana Maria Perez will be doing that as well. So with that said, let's get started. Now, uh, what we're going to do next is we're going to create those drag and drop boxes, okay? And what we're going to be using are shapes. So I'm going to go up here to my shapes and any shapes you want to use, but I prefer the one with the, the rounded edges. And I'm just going to drag and uh, click and drag until I get the shape that I want. And now I'm going to kind of customize it. So here, uh, the kids are supposed to drag it to where the, the section where it belongs. Well, I'm going to have them label the section first. And so 
Uh, this first section is north, and we use specific colors like north is blue, south is red, and um, west is orange. So here I'm going to go to the little fill color, the bucket, and this one's going to be blue. And I'm going to also change the size because it's probably a little too big to 11. I'm going to center it. And I'm going to uh, double click so I can start texting. Because the cool thing about shapes is that it's actually like a text box. Any shape, you can add text to it as well. So now I'm going to go ahead and type out north. I actually want the font to look better. Maybe like that. Or what about, I can't say that, paprika? Paprika? Am I saying it right? Okay. Anyways, yeah, I love that. So. I've got north, I'm going to, here's the important thing, and it'll save you a big headache, guys. Once you select it, you gotta wait to see those crosshairs come out. When the crosshairs come out, you can actually select, you can actually move the entire thing around. If not, what you're gonna end up doing is something like this, okay? So you wanna make sure that if you wanna move that, sp that shape, that you wait till those crosshairs are there, or if you want to select the entire shape, you click on it, and I'm going to do Control C, Control V, and then I, I waited for the crosshairs. Now we're there, and then another Control V, and now I have three of them because I do have three sections. This one I'm going to rename South, and this one West. I'm going to also change the color to the South to Red, and the color to the West to Orange. So now when the kids, kids get this activity, they're going to be sliding these to where they believe it belongs, okay? Now the other thing is, I'm going to go ahead and click on one, and I'm going to copy that one as well. And this one is going to be the one where the kids are actually going to slide all these, drag all these to where they belong. So I don't want to color code them because then they're, that's going to give it away. So these are going to be all one solid color. So I'm going to choose yellow. So I'm going to change this to yellow. And then here's the really neat trick, guys. You don't have to do these individual. I'm going to copy this one and paste. And then I'm going to put it really close to it, as close as it looks good. And I'm going to do another one. And I can continue doing that or check this out. If I click below it and I, I keep my finger pressed on it, and then drag my cursor across these and now release. I've selected those three. And I can now control C, control V, and I can drag these. And instead of doing one at a time and then repositioning them where I want them, I do three at a time and I can do that again. So if you want to watch me do that one more time, let me show you how easy it is. I'm going to click outside of the, the shapes keep my the pressure on it I'm gonna keep the clicked on there I'm gonna drag my finger across or my mouse across it and then all I'm gonna do is release and I've selected those I also want to move them up a little too much and I'm gonna copy and I'm gonna paste and now I'm gonna drag those over here because it's actually quite a bit of information that we're going to be adding a lot of those that the kids are going to have to drag and drop. So what I'm going to do next after this is actually add the information that I want the kids to know, like Chinese, Chinese. And if the text is too big, you can go in there and change it. Um, Mormons. And if you notice that most of the text is, is way too big, you can actually select it all again. No, it's too big. You can actually select it all as well, and you can go in and change it so that it fits all at once instead of having to do one at a time at a time. So all these, same thing like I did the other, on the other ones. I'm going to click outside of it. I'm going to keep it pressed. I'm going to drag across. I'm going to release, and now I'm going to change this to a smaller size font. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to fill those out and I'm going to create a complete product, right? A final product so that you can see what are those final products going to look like that the kids are going to be submitting back to you. Now, like I said earlier, 
uh, this doesn't mean that we stop when remote learning ends. We shouldn't end remote learning. We can continue doing this in class. So on those, if you have uh, devices in class, you can do these type of activities. If your kids have devices at home, they can complete those or they can come during early bird and go to your uh, computer lab and get this work done. That it, it really is, there's, there's really no variable that is out of our control. Things can get done, guys. So I'm gonna show you the final product next. Here we are with the final product. This is what the kids would be submitting and you would be checking to just kind of do a little uh, overall spot check, okay? For the most part, everything is there that needs to be there. Uh, in addition, what I want you guys to know is that in order for these activities to be su successful, you want to provide the kids with enough content knowledge for, for them to be successful. So if you notice, I had those YouTube tutorials and each tutorial I was going to segment into North, so the teacher, myself, I was gonna do a little pre-teach uh, or initial teach of the North and all those things that go along with it. And then uh, we're gonna do a Southern one and then for the West. And so that that's why when the final checking for understanding activity is presented to them as they're going through the slideshow presentation, they're able to complete it successfully. Now, another thing that you can do is if you wanna really organize them and help them out is you can say, hey guys, on the slide, you, you assign, you make one assignment for the kids in that Google slide, right? This is for your week, guys. And I want you on Monday to watch this, the video on the North, right? And complete this quick graphic organizer. And then on Tuesday, I want you to watch for the South and complete this graphic organizer. And then on Wednesday, the West, this graphic organizer. And then on Thursday, I want you guys to go ahead and complete this hands-on activity and then finally, on that Thursday, I want you guys to submit it to me because on Friday, I'm gonna assign a Google Forms quiz for you guys to take. So do you see how we organize the week like that for them so that it's nice and um, straightforward and the kids know what the expectation is, but instead of assigning a bunch of things and saturating their Google Classroom and bombarding them, we did one Google Science Slides presentation with your videos, with everything they want to know in there, and then their Google form for their quiz, which if you're interested, I'll be making a quick tutorial soon. You can browse around in our LJISD uh, uh, webpage and find that or go ahead and check it out on uh, my YouTube page. So it'll be up soon. Now, after you've done this, guys, the kids will submit it. Now let's get to actually submitting this assignment, uh, I'm sorry, assigning this activity to our kids. So guys, now it's time to assign our final Google Slides uh, assignment to our kids. We're gonna assign it through Google Classroom and I just wanna walk you through really quick how fast and easy it is uh, and some real quick tips and tricks that are really gonna make a difference and uh, facilitate in the kids uh, completing these uh, assignments quickly. Now, um, I'm here in a classroom that my friend and colleague, uh, we both share as like a demo and we just like practice things because sometimes we don't know like what if we do it like this or this way. So it's always good to do that beforehand. So this is a good demo class that I have here going. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to up here on the menu bar to class work and I'm going to create an assignment and I'm gonna click on assignment and I'm gonna title this, Digitize Your Hands-On Lessons. Uh, and we could have done, I'm just gonna put assignment. And uh, now we're going to add uh, a slides presentation. Here's the thing, guys. You can create straight from Google Classroom. You can actually click on Create and it'll open up a Google Slides presentation or a, Google's do a Google Docs. But the problem with that is it's going to save it to that folder that you're assigning those cl that, that class to, that assignment to. 
to that class. So without getting too technical, I strongly recommend you create your assignments outside of Google Classroom, especially because it really facilitates in sharing out to your colleagues. Uh, you can still do it if you create it from here. It just makes it so much easier, guys. So just believe me when I say it's best just to create straight from your drive, new slides presentation. That's the easiest route. And then all you have to do is add it here. So I'm gonna add it from my drive. And uh, it's my most recent, so here it is. And I'm going to click on add. And then here's the trick, guys. Here's the one you always wanna make sure that you do before you actually assign it. If you notice right here, it says students can view file. We don't want the kids to just view it. We want it to be a working copy for them to submit to us. So we're gonna click this little upside down carrot and um, students can edit file, yes, but we don't want them all editing this same file. We want them each to get a copy of it. So we're gonna click on make a copy for each student. And now that we're doing that, when you assign this to as many classes as you wanna assign, each student within that class and all classes are going to get a separate copy that they're going to be able to work on and submit back to you. So that's an amazing little tip and trick to facilitate uh, assigning a, a, these activities in Google Classroom. So I just go in ahead and did that. And then of course you fill this stuff out. How many classes to how many classes do you want to assign them or some specific students, so on and so forth. And then all you're going to do is click on assign. If you want to schedule it, you can go to the far right and it'll give you like a um, schedule assign on Monday morning, especially because sometimes I'm working on assignments and it's two, three in the morning. I don't want to assign it right then and there because guess what happens? The kids get the notification at two, three in the morning. Believe me, it's happened to me. So we don't want to do that. So here's the assignment. Digitize your hands on lesson. It's ready to go. And we've done it, guys. How easy was that? So what did you guys think about uploading it to Google Classroom? Wasn't it super easy? Um, and like I said, I recommend always working from your drive and then just attaching it to your classes uh, that you wanna assign them to. In addition, if you want more help with Google Classroom, because I didn't go into uh, specificity as far as like how to create a class or anything like that, browse our LGISD online PD uh, page. We will have those tutorials coming up. Some of the tutorials are gonna be live sessions by our amazing trainers, but they will have those pre-recorded, those uh, recorded links on there. So the sessions will be recorded as well. And those are really neat because people are uh, asking questions live, so they'll be able to answer those questions for you. In addition though, with that said, if you do want to reach out one uh, to me, to myself in reference to this presentation and to this information, anything tech related or anything if you just wanna chat, <laughs> by all means, go ahead and reach out to me. You have my, my, school, uh, my school email there, but you can also find me on Twitter under Mrs., as Mrs. Talk Techie or on YouTube as Mrs. Talk Techie as well. If you look at the description below, guys, on my YouTube tutorial, on the description below, we have all our social media links to our district uh, webpage on Facebook, on Twitter. If you're watching us, guys, give us a shout out. If you create something from using our PD sessions, we would truly appreciate uh, a shout out. That's just gratification and uh, that's what we really work for, guys. So uh, once again, thank you so much for taking the time and watching this. Please uh, don't forget uh, to keep browsing because we're gonna be uploading more uh, uh, video tutorials, tech tutorials on our site. So thank you so much, guys. We'll see you later.